to the County Pulse Podcast, where we take the pulse of Kankakee County and beyond and talk with our friends, neighbors, and movers and shakers. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the County Pulse and drop a follow. Joining me today, we are pleased to have uh, Coach Ernst. Uh, coach Ernst is the head coach for the Ripon uh, Red Hawk football team. And uh, uh, coach, we're, we're honored to have you on. We really are. Uh, we know that uh, you've got a big season that you're, you're dealing with right now, and you've got some games ahead of you. Um, uh, but you've got a story to history. And, uh, again, I just want to take the time to thank you for coming on. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on. Uh, it's always great, and it's a lot of fun to talk about our program, uh, our kids, our school, uh, the things that we've been able to do and, and are currently doing. It's, it's, uh, it's a great honor to be able to do that. Well, it's, it's an honor for me. And, you know, I'm going to say right up front, obviously I'm biased a little bit towards Ripon. <laughs> um, I have a son that goes there. Um, but I will tell you, I've interviewed other coaches at other schools. In fact, I interviewed Coach Cat, um, <laughs> Lake Forest, and uh, he, uh, uh, he was on and, uh, you know, smart guy and stuff. That was uh, probably about a month ago and had him on. And I've had, I've got another coach in the, in the wings at Illinois Wesleyan. If I can catch up with uh, uh, Coach Hoskins there, I'd just like to kind of get an idea. I'm really uh, kind of wanting to dive into D3. I think D3 often gets overlooked. Um, and I think there's really great football, especially being able to witness it uh, over the last year. It's just been phenomenal. So I think it's important that, we focus a lot on our D3 guys and, and, and these programs are just doing yeoman's work out there. And uh, you're one of those guys. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I really think that D3 is, is the best level there is because uh, yeah, it would be great to offer scholarships and all those kinds of things, but you're really attracting kids that really are playing the game of football for the right reasons. Uh, number one, to get an education and number two, they're playing football for the love of the game. And so when you get those kinds of kids into your program and you're having the opportunity to coach them, uh, that's a lot of fun. It really is. Uh, you don't deal with some of the issues that maybe D1s have to go through and things like that or D2. Uh, but D3 has its own unique uh, challenges also. But uh, uh, I've, I've been a D3 guy pretty much all my life. Uh, and so uh, I enjoy this level. I really do. Well, and you, you started your coaching career, uh, from what I understand, uh, back in, uh, at Ripon at 1991, but uh, I think your early career, uh, you were a high school coach. Is that right? Yes. I uh, uh, graduated in 1980 from Nebraska Wesleyan University. Uh, and just, you know, kind of a side note, I, I always wanted to be a head coach, and so – uh, I only applied for head coaching jobs out of college where maybe a lot of my teammates were just wanting to get a job or be an assistant. Uh, I always wanted to be a head coach, so I started to apply for head coaching jobs and was very, very fortunate to get a head coaching job. Uh, first stop was in Osceola, Nebraska, a town of about a thousand people, and it was a farm community. And uh, I had two assistants. That was it. Um so it was a it was a great way to start get my hands uh, in the into the mix with being a head coach and uh, all those challenges. But uh, that's where it all started, and uh, it, we've been very fortunate since then. Yeah, and that, from my understanding, that's uh, about 1980 that you were there, uh, and uh, then uh, you had a short stint there, and then you went for a few years over to uh, Fort Calhoun. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We uh, we were in Osceola only two years. Uh, we we had a little bit of a, a, of a family issue, family tragedy that occurred uh, in our family, and so we wanted to get a fresh start uh, with with uh, kind of starting over. And uh, we took over at Fort Calhoun. Uh, I was really really uh, counseled not to take that job. Uh, Fort Calhoun had never had a winning season in the history of the school uh, in football. And uh, a lot of my coaching friends said, that's, that's going to be the death of your coaching career, going to a school like that. But uh, I, I suppose I didn't listen. I loved the challenge. 
uh, took over a program that had never had, like I said, a winning season. And uh, uh, by our third year, we had won the conference championship and uh, made the state playoffs. And uh, uh, really, it was a great experience because there were some really, really low, low, low points uh, at Fort Calhoun trying to get that thing turned around. But, uh, boy, we were in the fire. But it, it really hardened us. It taught us a lot of things. And uh, uh, then we were able to, to move on and, and have great success after that. So, uh, yeah. And so in, in both of those cases, then I think we went on to really central high school. If, if mm -hmm. my, stuff, uh, if my information is correct. I think in both of those, going back to your first one, uh, uh, stint in high school, um, you took a season by, uh, by the second season, you took that team, I think it was, to a uh, conference championship, and uh, they played by regions there. So you guys were highly ranked there at third. And then when you went on to Fort Calhoun, uh, I think it was probably 20-some years that uh, they didn't have that winning season. And then uh, you uh, qualified for state playoffs and then uh, ranked eight in the state classification. Uh, I think they would have it different than maybe here in Wisconsin, but I think they have it as C2 here. Um, right. and, and really, you went there, and uh, uh, that was the one that didn't have a winning season for several years. And by the second season, you kind of turned that program around as, as <laughs> and made it through the semi playoffs. Is that correct? Yeah, we uh, we went to uh, uh, Greeley Central, I want to say about 86, uh, 80, 86, right in that general range. And uh, they had not had a winning season since 1957. Uh, and so uh, by our second year, we had won the conference championship, uh, made it all the way to the state semifinals. And, uh, you know, we were just really fortunate to uh, uh, have some tremendous success there also. And we just happened to be in the, in the same town as uh, the University of Northern Colorado. Uh, at that time was D2. Uh, got to know the coaches on that staff and uh, uh that afforded me the opportunity to make the jump to the college level, which is eventually where I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it, it's not like you had uh, a lot of uh, um, college experience. How did that transition happen where you, you uh, ended up leaving high school? Or I know you went to college in the university of uh, North Dakota. Is that correct? Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Well, what happened was, is, uh, uh, it was kind of a strange situation and a scary uh, situation at the same time. Uh, uh, the head coach at the time that brought me on uh, was a gentleman by the name of Ron Simonson. And uh, he had been there for several years. And, uh, you know, he was going to bring me on as kind of an assistant. Didn't know where I was going to go yet in terms of position. Well, uh our at the time special teams coordinator uh, was getting ready to leave the staff and go coach in Canada. Well, I actually helped. He's an old Nebraska guy. In fact, I, I knew Joe very well. And so actually the one day I, I helped him move furniture out of his house and into the moving truck. And then that night we got our, all of us got a call from the AD to come to the athletic center and uh, uh, Simonson uh, decided to resign. And within 30 minutes, they hired Joe Glenn as the head coach. And we were all concerned because we didn't know where any of our positions were or whether or not we were even going to be kept on staff. And so here I had just left uh, the high school position. I had resigned and right now wasn't even sure if I was going to have a staff to go on. And uh, Joe was just an amazing man, a, gr a great coach, and he, he kept everybody. And so uh, he made me the uh, defensive line coach and uh, was there for two years while I got my master's and then on to the great school of Ripon College. Now, how did that happen? Um, you know, I, I, as you probably know, I talked to uh, Coach Marshall um, mm -hmm. in a podcast, and he kind of had a unique way of saying, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, a – a little bit of a shift here and there, getting to ripping. How, right. how did that happen with uh, going from, you know, uh, uh, Colorado or your home to all the right. way to a small ripping college in Wisconsin? Well, again, there's another great story in that because 
uh, once I got my master's degree, I started looking at college jobs. And again, I, I've always wanted to be a head coach. So I was looking at head coaching positions around the country. And uh, the head job, at, I believe it was Wartburg uh, that opened up. And so I called Wartburg and I said, hey, I'm interested in your position. Can you tell me a little bit about it? And they were very, very nice, very professional and said, coach, we, we appreciate your call, but we already have somebody in mind that we're going to hire, um, I, I believe a former alum or, or whatnot. I'm not sure exactly who. And he's already at another school, but he's going to come to Wartburg. And so the, the light bulb went off and I thought, OK, well, if he's at one school and leaving, that's going to open up another position somewhere else. So even before they posted it, even before they posted it, I called Ripon College because that's where he was. Uh, Bob Nielsen was the gentleman's name. And uh, so I called uh, Ripon before they, even, they were surprised as heck that I even knew about it. Uh, because here I was calling them already. And the AD at the time, Chuck Larson, was not in the office, but the assistant AD, Bob Gillespie, was. So the department secretary put me on the line with him. Uh, we started talking. And now Bob was also uh, the head uh, basketball coach, but also the head baseball coach. Now, I played baseball in college also. And we got to talking, and he knew my old college baseball coach, so we talked for a long time, and then as soon as we hung up, I called my old high school base or college baseball coach to give Gillespie a call and put in a good word, which he did, and I was I'm very appreciative of that. So that's how the whole thing started. Was uh, uh, plus they had to hire me because I literally had the longest interview in the history of mankind because uh, I think I came in on a Thursday, and when I set up the plane flight from from Denver. Uh, at the time, if you stayed X number of nights, it was going to be this amount of money and whatnot, uh, how it goes. But uh, they were just going to bring me in for a day or two, which is what they were doing for everybody. But when I called to get the plane ticket, if I just stayed one night, and I, the price was tremendously high. But if I stayed over the weekend, it was going to be cheaper, believe it or not. So uh, I called the dean at the time, uh, Doug Northrup. And I said, Mr. Northrop, what would you like me to do? I mean, I can come for a day or two, but it's going to cost you this. But if I stay over the weekend, it'll cost you that. And he said, get the cheaper ticket. So I was literally on the Ripon campus for about five days uh, so we could get the cheaper plane ticket. So uh, and then when I got here, they lost my luggage. So literally for five days, I was in a three piece suit the entire time. So it was a very unique start to a career and a start here at Ripon College, but I loved every minute of it. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a that is a pretty unique story. And, uh, yeah. um, you know, as you come through this, getting there from 91 uh, till now, and, and, you know, obviously everybody knows this is your last season, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's been 31 years. Is that right? Coach? 32. 32. 32. This, yeah, this is 32. Okay. Um, so, uh, How's that feeling for you right now? We'll go back and talk a little bit about that 91 up. But how's that feeling for you knowing this uh, This is your last season? Well, it, 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 it kind of comes and goes in waves. You know, uh, you know, when we're getting ready for a really tough opponent, I don't even think about it. It doesn't even dawn on me. Uh, but as the season has progressed uh, and, the, and, and the end is getting a little closer, you know, obviously the end of the season – it's starting to sink in a little bit more. Uh, there are days where I wake up and I, I wonder, did I pull the trigger too soon? Because we're having, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun and, you know, having the kind of season we're having. And I said, man, I'd like to do this again next year. But then there are days where I wake up and I, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's time. Uh, it's time to uh, go on to the next phase of life. Uh, you know, there are things that I still really, really enjoy doing in my job, but there are some things that I just, I'm not sure I want to do anymore, you know, and, uh, you know, administrative work, paperwork, other things that a head coach has to do, uh, that I'm not real excited about every day, but I, I love practice. I love practice. I love the, you know, being out there with the kids. Uh, we have a tremendous group of young men on our team this year. 
Uh, I love just being out there with them, and that, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss game day Saturdays. I'm going to miss the parents. You know, I really am. We have a great parent following, great support, um, and so there are parts that I'm going to miss, but I, I know it's time to move on and, and do something else um, and, and kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I think I can understand. I think most people who either listen or watch this will understand that you – you're doing uh, something you love, and that's not something everybody gets the opportunity to do, right? And even though it's something you love, you have this other, right, the, the mm -hmm. life, which is, you know, your wife and your kids and, of course, your grandkids, right? Mm -hmm. And at yep. some point, you, you kind of come to the conclusion, either through yourself or probably a conversation with your wife that says, hey, you know, uh, we you know, we, we have stuff to do. And, and right. you know, I don't know about you, you know, my, my retirement – uh, came early, uh, unplanned, and uh, disabled because of a medical condition. And that was, a, kept, I was counting down the clock, right? Uh, I loved what I did, but uh, it was a conflict resolution. But after a while, it just became conflict, and uh, the stress level was really high. And I kept saying, hey, I got 10 more years to go, 10 more years to go. And then I had this medical condition. And next thing he says, you're never going to work again because of this. And uh, I think when, it's, when you're facing that, uh, whether it be voluntarily or uh, thrown upon you, it sounds good in theory. But there is a, you know, I, I sat down with my oldest brother and really I was in tears. I said, I, I'm not ready to do this. Now, if you asked me a year ago prior to that, I would have been like, I can't wait to get out. Right, um, right. It was just a hard thing to adjust to. But, you know, even though I can't do the things I used to do, uh, these are things I know I can do. Um, <laughs> And uh, you, my wife was just like, hey, you know, it's going to work out. Uh, we're going to be fine. Um, and, you know, uh, I think you have more grandkids than me. I think you have seven or eight. I've got one. Um, and I don't know about your place, but at my place, um, uh, that little guy, Carter, he walks on water. He can do whatever he wants. And uh, and uh, Jeff here uh, took a back seat to that. I'm uh, yeah. Yeah. There, my wife's eyes and uh, in uh the uh, Carter's eyes. He's like, you know what? I'm out, right? So yeah. uh, give me Gigi. And uh, so I think when you start looking at that point, um, you really start figuring out, hey, you know, it's something I've got to do. I need to enjoy it, right? Um, I spend a lot of time, as probably many people do, just thinking through, not really living in that most, uh, moment, thinking about all the things I've got to do. And now I'm kind of getting to a point in my life where uh, I just enjoy it. I I'm blessed to be here. Uh, I'm blessed that everything happened that as you know uh with grayson um uh, being there uh i told my uh surgical team when i got my transplant look i need you to work hard for me today i had already been told by uh russian northwestern that i would die on the table so they rejected me so when i was at mayo clinic uh you know i asked them all to come around uh before they started and i just said i have a lot to do i have a son that has a dream of playing college football i want to be there got Two dollars. I need to walk down the aisle, and I'm two days away from my 28th wedding anniversary, uh, and I have a lot to do. And uh, I just thought, you know, when Northwestern says you're not going to make it, you're not making it. Mm -hmm. uh, and being out of that, and really having a just an epiphany in that room uh, as I was waiting, I had uh, the lady next to me just telling me, "Hey, we do this every day, Jeff. You don't have anything to worry about. We do this. You have more wedding anniversaries. You're going to see your son playing college." Um, and so I think when that's put on you, and probably when you get here, Coach, uh, they, you'll be able to look back and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I miss it, but you know, you're going to really enjoy your time with, with your family, and that, that's really, really important. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly am looking forward to the opportunity to do some different things. Uh, I do have eight grandchildren, and I'm, I'm looking forward to going to all of their activities, their concerts, their athletic events and and just being able to uh be around more uh being a head football coach you know there's a there, there's a lot of things pulling at you between the recruiting going on the road uh preparing for a season all kinds of things and now i'm just going to have more time to be able to enjoy uh my family my wife and i we both love to travel uh we try to travel around the world and just experience life and uh, uh we we've tried to do that we took all the grandkids to, and their families to disney world uh 
you know, this last summer. And then my wife and I spent 12 days in Hawaii. Uh, and so that was, that was just a lot of fun. We, we enjoy doing things like that. We'll just maybe get in the truck and go just drive around the country for two weeks. We'll do things like that. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot of those kinds of things without having to worry about getting back and getting uh, roommate set things set up and, and uh, cafeteria schedules and practice schedules and all kinds of things. Now I've enjoyed those things for a number of years, but I am looking forward to, uh, you know, doing some, some different things. Well, and probably I would imagine dealing with a football team over the years, it's probably like having, how many kids are on the team right now? hundred maybe? Uh, we, we, we've got, yeah, we've got close to about 90 kids uh, on the team. So it's probably like having 90 kids, right? Uh, yeah. You got your kids, right? And uh, then you have uh, 90 kids that you got to figure out. And um, as you probably know, uh, and you certainly do know, raising kids, um, sometimes you can pull your hair out. And I imagine coaching, uh, it can be the same way. You're sometimes saying, hey, I'm going to pull my, my hair out. Uh, and probably one of the things that I think is important is talking about having a kid um, you know, there's there's a guy I think can drive you crazy, uh, and it happens to be this guy here. Uh, <laughs> what up, y'all? What a Yahoo! We're back, uh, uh, Jared uh, uh, Zebra, and uh, he is uh, helping navigate your team. Uh, through this process, and Jared, we were just talking about kids and how they drive you crazy. And you want to pull your hair out, and lo and behold, you jumped in. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. How are you? I I'm blessed, man. You good, know that. Right? Good to see you. Well, we thought you have you on and, and just say a few things to Coach. Uh, you know, it's, it's his last year, and I want you to take the time to do that if you can, and uh, uh, just talk a little bit to him about. Uh, what you're doing and uh, uh, you guys take a few minutes to talk and then um, kind of just talk a little bit about what, what, what's special about the coach. Um, just everything he does, um, whether it's him being a coach, um, whether it's him being a professor, an academic advisor, um, being a husband, a father, um, you know, I probably stop by his office two, three times a week um, more than I should, but you know, <laughs> And he's always willing to talk, and um, just everything that he does, he he approaches it the right way. And I I just want to say thank you for that, coach. You're definitely someone I look up to for sure. Well, you make it easy, kiddo. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a good Red Hawk. You're being a good Red Hawk. Trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> he's also a pretty good student, uh, Jeff. He, he uh, I had him in class the last couple semesters, and he's turned out to be a pretty doggone good student. He's a uh, He's going to be a good one. Well, he, he's the type of guy, uh, I got to know him a little bit uh, this summer. Uh, you know, um, him and uh, my son were talking, and uh, lo and behold, he ended up at my place. And uh, um, I was talking to him because Grayson wanted some kids over, and I said, hey, keep an eye on Grayson. You know, he's going to have some friends over. You know, he's big now. He's a yeah. ripping football player. And uh, he said, I'm just here to work. I just want to work. So they ended up going to the football field and, and working, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about that, Jerry, of coming down and spending some time with a recruit and, and, you know, kind of what your goal was there. And, again, I'm going to let you guys talk a little bit. i got a couple of things I'm doing here. But why don't you talk a little bit about that down here, let Coach know what you, you did down here and kind of what your, what your thought process was in that. Um, It was just fun. Uh, that was my first time meeting – one of the incoming guys and really developing a relationship with them. So that was fun to get to know uh, Grayson before he had actually got here. Um, and just, you know, just like working out with anyone else in the off season or anything, just wanted to go over routes, um, techniques, just anything that could help us, you know, coming in. We try to go over and try and get a head start on things. I think that really goes to show, uh, you know, Jeff, uh, the leadership uh, of, of Jarrett, uh, as, well, as well as a lot of our upperclassmen, uh, the leadership that these guys have provided this year has been nothing short of amazing. And uh, 
I think that uh, this is a team that is laser focused on having the very, very best season possible. Uh, certainly their hard work has paid off in some of the tight games that we've had this year and not losing faith and doing everything we needed to do to get the job done. Uh, I will say this kind of as a side note, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, just having young men between the ages of 18 and 22. Well, this knucklehead is certainly one of those guys. Uh, but when I did come to Ripon, I, I don't, not sure people know this, but I was a very, very, very bright redheaded man. I had really bright red hair. Now, as you can see, that red hair is gone and it has turned very much gray. And it's mostly because, you know, dealing with young men between the ages of 18 and 22 can, can turn a man that way. But, uh, no, you know, kidding aside, though, the, the, these guys are great kids. They really are very fortunate. And uh, I think we've recruited some really high character young men and uh, they've they've bought into what we're trying to do here and they believe it. And uh, the leadership with, you know, with with, with Jarrett and, and some of the other guys has just uh, been outstanding this year. It really has been. Well, that's one of the things I talked about was trying to get him on and some other guys. If they, you know, I know they're in school, right? Sometimes they have a break here, and uh, so I was hoping I could catch one or two of them out. And uh, uh, as you said, he's a leader. So when I asked him, of course he didn't hesitate. He said, "Yeah, it could be too." He's probably trying to maybe pick up his social game, maybe find some chick or something. I'm, you know, I don't know. Um, we talked about that this morning, didn't we, Jerry? We did. We had to talk about that. <laughs> uh, see, uh, see, I'm I'm clairvoyant. I know things yes. that I'm not yes. supposed to know. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we're, we're happy to have you on, Jerry. We I appreciate you on the last kind of minute there, taking some time to talk to Coach Ernst and and uh, be on here. And uh, if you don't mind, Coach, I know this is your interview, but uh, Jerry, talk a little bit about uh, you've got some games coming up. Talk a little bit about how you prepare yourself uh, after you get done a, a week of practice and uh, you're ready to hit the field. What's your thought process? Because we had a conversation last weekend, uh, and we, which we do every weekend. I'm not your, I'm not the coach, coach. So I'm it's not all right. Saying, it's all right. <laughs> um, but I was asking, but kind of, you know, is this team? I heard this team's playing this team next week and this and that. And you know what he said? He said, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't keep track of it. The only way we're going to win a conference, the only way I want to win a conference is be undefeated. So I don't really care what anyone else does. We have to be undefeated. And I thought that was pretty uh, special uh, of a guy who is just focused on, you know, eliminating the noise, keeping his mind right where it needs to be. And uh, is your philosophy like that all the time, Jared? Do you try to bring that same philosophy of just getting it done in front of you? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I've found what works best for me is kind of not pay attention to any of the other teams, you know, who's winning this and that. And, um, you know, I've seen some teams win a conference like nine and one or this and that. And that's great because, I mean, you still worked really hard and you did your thing. But um, I don't know. I feel like there's nothing like going 10 and 0 and really making yourself the best team. And, you know, there's no doubt about it. And that's that just kind of works for me and kind of what I believe in. And I like to have the other guys feel the same way about it. Well, there you go. You can't beat that, huh, Coach? No, you can't. And uh, I'm really uh, – I, I think Jared is a reflection of, of what a lot of our kids on the team are thinking. Uh, certainly as a coaching staff, we're trying to keep their heads, you know, in the right spot uh, in terms of let's just focus on the game in front of us. Um, I've caught a couple players kind of looking down the road a little bit this week, and we snapped on them pretty good very quickly that the most important game in our lives right now is Beloit. And uh, uh, that's, that's the most important thing there is. And uh, uh, I, I, you know, they, w once they realize, Oh, yep. We, we got to refocus on Beloit and we've had a good week of practice though, so far. And uh, I anticipate another good one tonight. Uh, but I think our kids are very focused on having a great season. Um you know, you know, we're, we're at seven and zero right now. And so we control what, what we do the next three weeks. And, uh, right now the one in front of us is Beloit. And, uh, I think we're going to do a good job this week. I really do. 
Well, that's great to hear. Hey, Jared, I, I won't keep you. Hopefully you're going back and hitting the books or maybe getting some rest before practice, right? Um, but hit the books um, and uh, behave yourself. And uh, we will see you guys uh, this week and we'll be up tomorrow. And uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time to come on with this coach. And I know how much he means to you. You've talked to me about him uh, and how special he is to you. And I think you guys make a great combination of a head coach and, and uh, a quarterback, but I know there's a ton of other kids that are out there just grinding away and, you know, not one person wins it, but the, the team does. And I think uh, reading some of your interviews, coach, that you said, uh, the chemistry on this team, the cohesiveness on this team is almost unmatched. Uh, it's just a, a, a powerful uh, thing to have is that type of cohesiveness. And that really comes from leadership, both uh, internally with the players, but it also comes from uh, you as a head coach and your other, your other uh, coaching staff. So, Jared, thanks for stopping in, man. Uh, we'll see you. Let's uh, take care of some business uh, on Saturday. All right, brother? Thank you for having me. Hey, take care, man. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> with Jarrett, uh, you know, talking about the kids and pulling your hair out, he's he's a kid I've heard you talk about can make you pull your hair out and at other times can just do some amazing things. And um, uh, talk a little bit about that. And then let's talk a little bit about kind of your players. And then we'll do a kind of a retro back to uh, through the years, right, with you and see what, what's going on there. But talk a little bit about that uh, gray hair that you talked about earlier uh, that went from red to gray hair, which he's got a little bit of red hair, so he'll know that in yeah. a few years. He'll be pulling his hair out too. Yeah. Well, Jared certainly is somebody uh, very special to us. Uh, uh, from the moment uh, I was able to come in contact with him and start to recruit the young man, I knew he was going to be some somebody pretty special. Um I typically would recruit Arizona and that whole part of the area. Well, uh, I knew that there was tremendous talent in the Vegas area. We were on a few kids, Jarrett being one of them. And so I certainly wanted to, you know, get to Vegas and uh, meet with this young man. And we, and we met with, uh, you know, the guys. And when I had a chance to, uh, make a home visit to Jared's house, it was just going to be very special. And it, it ended up being a very, very good visit. Uh, he came out uh, to visit uh, to Ripon. I think he really, really liked it. And so uh, we just, it was a great home for him. It really was. And so uh, it, it worked out well. Uh, we're very fortunate that he is, that he is with us. And uh, he's somebody special. He works. He works very hard. He has a great work ethic. Uh, he has the respect of his teammates, and uh, that that's what's really important. Also, um, and a lot of our kids do. A lot of our upperclassmen uh, who've been around for a while, and I think it's somebody that a lot of these upperclassmen, Jarrett and Brad and Kaipo and Zach and Capenna, or excuse me, uh, Parker. Uh, all these guys, all these guys uh, have the respect of their teammates, and uh, they're setting really, really good examples as to how we do it in this program. And so our young guys coming up, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the freshman, Grayson, and all those guys can see how we do things, and they'll just continue to build that uh, throughout their careers, and that's why I think this program will continue to be very, very successful. Yeah, I, I've really noticed with some of your guys, uh, you know, as a fan being there, they are absolutely focused and they uh, they do some unique things. I know uh, Dylan's out there. Uh, I always remember Dylan because he's zero, right? And uh, mm -hmm. he's been working through a lot of issues this year and uh, uh, just seemed to be, I mean, you can't keep the guy off the field um, mm -hmm. and just doing some amazing thing. And when you talk about just all your guys that are coming through, I think what's unique that we've witnessed is that relationship that the seniors and the upperclassmen have with the kids coming in. Uh, and they've really taken them under their wings. And uh, I've, I've seen, uh, and, and rightfully so, that they've at times had to tell kids, hey, get your head in the game. Get your head right. in the program, right? And and sometimes that doesn't happen in every program. Sometimes there's a separation, you know, and, and – right. uh, uh, sometimes I've talked to different coaches through all these different processes, and 
sometimes you have kids that are there that don't buy into that. You know, they don't buy in. So they're saying, ah, you know, we have some guys that are either seniors that maybe weren't, didn't win previously. They can't buy in. You have younger guys who go, I'm not buying in. Um, but they seem to buy in. And when they, when they seem to get off track, uh, they seem to really get put back on track. Um, and I think, at least from our perspective, uh, you know, I, I see a program that in a school that really these kids uh, live their best lives. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that's reflective of not just the school, but also uh, the, the coaching staff and then the kids you recruit. And talk a little bit, you know, you mentioned with, with, uh, with uh, Jarrett, out, you got some out west connections too, right? So talk a little yeah. bit about that. Well, certainly, uh, we talk about our, our our team culture, and it certainly didn't just happen overnight. You know, this has been a process over the years because uh, when I came in in 1991, uh, there were some issues. There were some things that we really, really had to deal with. Uh, we had fraternity issues. We had uh issues between different classmen we had issues between offense and defense and so over a period of time i knew what i wanted my program to look like so we got rid of a bunch of kids along the way we tried to recruit better kids that kind of fit our philosophy uh when we would recruit them we would certainly tell them this is where we are going to be and this is what we're going to do and you know that's why i think we've been so successful uh, over these 31, 32 years is because uh, I wanted it to be a certain I did not want seniors stuffing freshmen into lockers. I didn't want any kind of initiation uh, baloney. Uh, we didn't want any of that. We, When we brought a kid in, we wanted every single young man, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, to feel like they were a part of something and they were going to contribute in in their own unique way and and i think that's where we're at right now is we we've got everybody on board with that uh and so uh we're excited about that we're excited about the future and uh uh i, I think we have a great freshman class this year that are learning from some really really good upperclassmen that uh as they grow as they become sophomores as they become juniors if they stick to those principles uh, that we've established, they're, they're going to be just fine. Yeah. And, and you have some guys that are what we call super seniors or fifth year seniors. And right. th that's because of COVID, right? Yes. So you have some uh, folks, uh, kids that are actually uh, maybe student teaching, doing different things, but also then playing football. How's that been the adjustment of coming through COVID? And then, and then for these kids, it's a, it's an added pressure because, they're, they're really working in, in some cases. I mean, they're going to school, but they're doing all these different things uh, and playing football. Um, how's that been for you as a coach working through that process? And has that caused issues for you when you're out recruiting? Because, you know, some some places kids stay, some places they don't. They say, hey, I'm done. And you probably have a mixed bag of that, too. Yeah, we had some uh, – we had a very large senior class last year, and a decent number of those kids decided to – play their fifth year and take advantage of the COVID year uh, that the NCAA allowed them to have. Uh, some of those kids are student teaching, so they were going to have to do school work anyway. And with the student teachers, it has been no problem at all. Uh, uh, the one thing I have always believed in is that academics will always, always be the number one priority uh, in our young men's lives. And so whether it's student teaching, whether it's staying late to get help from a tutor, um, whether it's a class going late, uh, that's the number one priority. And so when a kid does get to practice, whether it's from student teaching, from meeting with a tutor or whatnot, um, it means basically nothing. You know, they simply stretch on their own to get ready, jump into practice and, and we go. Uh, so we do not make it hard for our kids. We're, we're not going to make them uh, or force them to make a choice between do I go to practice or do I go to class? Uh, we just we just don't do that. And, and we've never done that. Uh, again, in 32 years, academics has always been the number one uh, priority here. And so I think our kids appreciate that. And I think that's maybe why uh, we've had a lot of kids stick. Uh, we don't have a tremendous uh, turnover ratio. I mean, we, our retention rate is pretty high uh, because I think we treat kids right and they understand 
that academics is going to be a high priority here for them. Well, I think, too, what, what, what I've gathered from folks is uh, kids, is it's like a family there. And we mm-hmm. feel that, too, right, when we come up as parents. We feel this issue of uh, we're home. You know, it's a small town. Um, and, uh, you know, all the coaches are easily approachable. Not that I don't think we do. I don't know about any other parent, but we don't talk about the game or anything. We you know, just say, hey, good luck or whatever. But, you know, we can get together after a, a uh, thing and just BS for a few minutes. And sometimes you don't get that. And that then is reflective too, I think, in the team, right? There's times for business and times when you got to get in their butt and make sure they're focused on things and doing the right things. But there's also that respect issue. And, and I'll be honest with you, my daughter played Division One softball um, and she played out East. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, we went to dinner when we, uh, with Grayson, when we first up there and, 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 and Rocco, one of the other freshmen, and they're talking about the different things they do. And my daughter said, well, why? I mean, you guys just don't go do what you want to do or what? Like, no, well, why not? They don't yell at you. Right? It's out of respect, right? And so I, and that was different in, in her college experience. It was ran out of fear. And, uh, you know, everyone's got their own way of doing stuff. Uh, I always say I would never play for a Bobby Knight, right? Um, he's a different kind of cat. Um uh, but some people strive on that system here. Right. It's a, the, the relationship between player and coach, I think is fairly unique and it becomes a respect issue. I think when guys let you down or let down uh, their teammates, uh, I think it's reflective of how they respond to that. Right. They feel bad about it. Um, and they know, Hey, you know, this is, it's not, Hey, you have to do this. It's like, these are the expectations of the program. And so uh, I, I really enjoy that. And, and we enjoy that. Um, and I think that's kind of helped you build over time. I know you guys have a new offensive uh, uh, kind of system in place. It's no secret to anybody, right? Um, mm-hmm. And that's really kind of just growing and growing, having the opportunity for Grayson uh, to spend time with Jared. And, of course, I don't know anything. We watch football, but I don't know. I'm asking all this different stuff. And and he's like, we don't have a full handle on everything. But he said, you know, going into, which was this year, we're going to have a much better handle on it. And I think we combine like, hey, we gained a lot more knowledge into a very, uh, I wouldn't say complicated program, but I would say it's it's very encompassing. There's a lot going on, a lot of options, right? Um, and then you combine that cohesiveness, man. I think you guys are on the right track. And, and, and going back and looking, right, like let's talk about your first game at Knox, right? Um, that was a game in, in which, uh, you know, you guys felt comfortable, but sometimes – you just don't know who's going to show up um, and and what's going to happen. And, you know, it turned out well, but that's your first game, right? And so everything you're practicing, is that happening on the field? How did you feel about that execution? I mean, you end up winning handily, but uh, did you feel, hey, we've, we've led this team and they've really, you know, executed well uh, this season and particularly yeah. in the first game? Because that's always the test, right? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, we came out of uh, summer camp uh, feeling pretty good about where we were at. Uh, We were very disappointed that we weren't able to play our 10th game last year against Lawrence uh, because of COVID uh, situations. And actually, our first game was going to be against St. Norbert. And uh, that was going to be a very tough one. And so uh, coming out of that one, uh, it was a non-conference game, non-conference. And so uh, winning a very tough game like that, I think, really boosted us with a lot of confidence. So when we went into the Knox game, which was our first conference game, uh, again, you just don't know what kind of team you're going to have, especially when it comes to conference play. And so our kids just really, really played well. And And our goal has always been to try to get a little better every week. I mean, I think every program tries to do that. Uh, but we really stress that, uh, you know, for example, like this week, uh, we're not, we, we, we don't really care what Beloit's record is or what they do well or what they don't do. We're going to prepare for what they do, but we're more concerned about us. You know, do we tackle better? Do we communicate better? Do we execute on offense better? Do we run the right place? Do we hear the checks? All those kinds of things, you know, the little things that it takes for a team to be successful and we and that's all kind of been built since week one uh it's just building on that as we go through the season and uh 
our kids, again, to their credit, um, have really done an outstanding job with that. Yeah, and 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 I misspoke. Your first game was St. Norbert. So yeah. It was a 13-10 yeah. game, and that was a that was a game uh, in which you uh, uh, to come away with a win. There, they're always been they're, they're a former mm-hmm. uh, conference uh, team, and then broke away a few years back, and so they've always been tough. And I think there's a, probably some bragging rights there. There, mm-hmm. uh, St. Norbert's is up near uh, uh, Green Bay. At, here or how you how they say it there in wisconsin um, i'm not for the sure pier. but yeah and uh so uh that's that's an issue as well as lawrence lawrence uh your last game of the season is another used to be maybe still a rival right is kind of running those rivals obviously you got tough competition in lake forest monmouth university of chicago but now you're talking within the state and you get your uh you know, you get your hairs worked up a little bit there. We're playing against some guys in your own state, right? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the Lawrence rivalry is one of the oldest one of the oldest rivalries in D3 football. And uh, our alums certainly look at that game as a – that's a must game. If, if you go one and nine all year, you better beat Lawrence. Uh, that's the one win you got to have. So uh, I'm anticipating that when we play Lawrence this year, uh, there will be an awful lot of, of a lot of alums there. Uh, I will certainly be getting texts and emails and all kinds of things from alums, uh, basically saying "beat the heck out of Lawrence." You know, uh, that's the one that they really, really look forward to. And uh, uh, you know, it's one of those kind of rivalries that after 99 years. The series was exactly tied, uh, wow. 47, 47 and five uh, over 99 years. I mean, it was exactly tied. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, somebody with way too much time on their hands went back and looked at all the scores over those first 99 years. And the score differential between Ripon and Lawrence was like 10 points after oh, 99 I- years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's how tight that thing was. And and through 99 years, no one had won the series more than three years in a row. Wow. And so come the year 2000 uh, was the 100th game, and um, we won, and we haven't lost since. And so uh, uh, it's been 20 years. We obviously didn't play them during COVID, and then last year there was another COVID related situation uh but we're really looking forward to playing them again this year and uh continuing on with that rivalry it'll be a good one yeah and you got three more games left right coach so you've got right. Beloit coming up this weekend then you got a jv game on sunday they'll play up at st norbert's right uh, then you got monmouth they're a behemoth right um mm-hmm. they're, they're always a top competitor and then you have lawrence at home to kind of finish the season off so right uh, as, as as the right Focus is making sure you're you're focused on Beloit, um, mm-hmm. getting ready for that tough Monmouth game, and then of course, as you just mentioned, the longest rivalry, one of the longest rivalries in D three is Lawrence. So you've got your work cut out for you the next three weeks. It doesn't get any easier. It really doesn't. And again, that's part of the reason why my hair is gray is because <laughs> it seems like every single week is a battle. Every single week, the competition is outstanding. Uh, Certainly, we've had some very good games throughout the season. Uh, had to come from behind to beat Illinois College on the road. Had to come from behind on the road to beat Lake Forest. Uh, Chicago was certainly a nail-biter start to finish. And so uh, we, we've been tested. We've been battle-tested. And uh, I certainly don't see anything different happening in, this, in these last three games. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, uh, you know, kind of checking the schedule, you, we got uh, – uh, to the big dogs, Lake Forest, right? Uh, who came in last year and and took care of business uh, when you both were undefeated this year, going to their place. Uh, you're probably thinking at that point, uh, "Wow, we, we we took it on the chin last year." And uh, going to their place is always a tough place to play. Um, uh, their their student section uh, and fan section is pretty loud and boisterous. Um, and so coming into that, you're probably thinking, "Man, I wish we could have them back home again." But you, you end up coming away uh, uh, at the last minute with about an 18-yard touchdown. Um, I think it was uh, Z- Jarrett to uh, Parker. Parker, yeah, Parker yes. uh, uh, Campana. And uh, uh, 
uh, to finish that thing off. And of course, then you had to stop and coming back. But uh, that that probably had to be a pretty satisfying win because you know uh, better than anybody those top teams, uh, University of Chicago, Lake Forest, of course, Monmouth. They're the ones that if you want to get anywhere, you got to make sure you're ready to play with them. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, there were, you know, of the four top teams in the league, you know, the f- top four picks anyway, in the preseason poll, you know, Lake Forest, uh, Chicago, Monmouth, us were the were the top four picks. Um, and I don't even know what order they, I think Lake Forest was picked to win it again. Uh, and I think we were picked fourth. So I'm not sure where Monmouth and Chicago fell, but we've knocked off two of those so far. And uh, hopefully we can uh, take care of business this week. Uh, and that's what we're really focused on. And then then it's going to be on to uh, a big one with Monmouth. And uh, now what will be interesting is that Monmouth plays Lake Forest this weekend. So that could be interesting. You know, who knows yeah. what will happen. Um, it's, uh, I believe it's Lake Forest Parent Day. So, you know, we, we, we're pulling for Lake Forest, certainly. Uh, this week, and uh, I think they know that. So, uh, uh, and then they'll probably, be, if they can knock off Monmouth, they'll be pulling for Monmouth the following week against us. No, that's so right. That that's how it goes. That's how it goes. That's the way the game is played. But uh, again, we're just really, really focused and uh, on Beloit. Uh, we're feeling very fortunate and blessed to have the kind of year that we've had. Uh, you know, and, and I just want to take this opportunity too to. Uh, thank all of our families too. Uh, we, we have had just unbelievable support from our families and, and I'm even talking about on the road, uh, when we've been at Illinois college at Lake forest at Cornell, uh, we've had some unbelievable crowd following with, with our parents, alums, all those kinds of things. Uh, and I would venture to bet there were a couple games this year when we were on the road we had more people in the stands than the home team did. Uh, so that just kind of goes to show what kind of families we have and the support we have. And uh, I'm really very appreciative of the families of our, of our players. I really am. Well, I know you have people come from all over. We're about three and a half, four hours away, but you have, uh, for example, the Herrera family, they come from Colorado, I think mm-hmm. uh, every weekend. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought we were dedicated when my daughter played softball. We went to Colorado, Boston, all over. But, uh, yeah. yeah, they're there, and, and we see the same faces. And uh, I love the fact that you're playing. And a lot of times, uh, I, I think it's Parker, uh, one of them, but there's a couple of kids that come on side. And, hey, we got to go. Pick it up. Pick it up. We got to go. Yeah. And really yeah. uh, helps the parents kind of get involved, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, we want to be as helpful as possible, as I'm sure every team's fan base does. But, uh, we feel blessed with that, and uh, I know uh, uh, our tailgates have really, uh, you know, as part of that cohesive, if you talk about it, really taken off, and, and right. the folks that have done that uh, uh, have just been uh, great. I know they're going to be moving on, I think, after this year, so mm-hmm. we're hoping that we have some folks. I know we do stepping up for that, but I think that's been a real important thing for fe- people as well to build that cohesiveness um, outside of that, because I think the cohesiveness in your family uh, is important too, right? To feel like, hey, we're part, not just we're in it together, but we're in it with the team. Uh, we're kind of that uh, 12th man on the field, right? I used to say mm-hmm. sixth man on the court. Um, and we hope that we can do that and uh, bring that this weekend. I think, you, are you guys doing something special uh, this weekend for football? I thought I'd seen something uh People may be dressing up or wearing costumes or something. It's Halloween. Uh, uh, that that part I'm not aware of. Uh, I, I, I pretty much walk into the office and, and jump on the computer and start working on X's and O's and all those kinds of things. And then I'm out of there for practice. And it, that's kind of been the cycle for the last 10 weeks. So uh, no, no, I, I, I know what they're doing. You know, I, I, I think there's a Halloween thing. I, now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. That, I've seen it that sounds about right. Now I'm laying claim to that. And I'll tell you why I'm laying claim to that because I started painting my face uh, and I think people say, Hey, I'm not doing it, but I'll do it at, at Halloween. I'll dress up yeah. like crazy Halloween. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah, I, I historically with my daughter, when she played softball, we would travel all over the country. I painted my face. I had a good friend of mine who's now passed uh, Dan Ross, who uh, we were at nationals. They said, I'm going to put, we were called the Hawks, right? So uh, uh, always one played for the Hawks, 
youngest one's playing for the Red Hawks. So we kind of keep that hawk somewhere in the family, I guess. There you go. And, there you uh, go. I painted my face, and he said, hey, can I carve hawks in the back of your head? And I thought, well, this is going to look crazy. And I'm telling you, Coach, it was perfect. And okay. if, I didn't wear, if I didn't wear my face paint, the kids would say, Mr. Dexter, why didn't you paint your face? <laughs> so long and behold, my son says to me, Dad, did you paint your face for one of my games? I'm like, oh, what do you say to that? I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll do it. So, yes, you know, yeah. yeah no, you so, uh, and I think uh, some of the other parents painted their face. So uh, you got to have fun with it, man. Oh, and sure. uh, uh, we know as families, we talk about a lot, those kids and you guys put a lot into this and we want to give you as much support as we can. Uh, we're looking for a great season. It's been a great season, but we have more work to do. And uh, uh, what's, before we part, what, what's kind of your highlight, uh, some of your highlight points from 91 till now that you're looking at uh, that you can uh, remember? I, I think, you know, maybe it was the first time we did something. Uh, in 95, uh, we won the division for the first time in like 15 years, which put us into the conference championship game. Uh, we lost that game, but then the next year we came back and won the division again, but then played for the conference title and just really played well and 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 really – Cornell, the team that we played, just didn't stand a chance. I mean, our kids were so focused on on the game, and it was just a, you know, it, it was just a bloodbath almost. Uh, so, you know, the first time you do something, uh, I think uh, seeing some of the kids that, uh, you know, I've recruited and, and they've played break records. You know, we, we've had three kids that were players of the year in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we've had players of the year in the in the conference, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, when I see kids go off and do great things beyond college, you know, get married, have families and, and be very successful in their careers. Those are the real highlights is when you do something maybe for the first time, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. Now, this could be a special weekend, too, because I've never started eight. No, our best start was seven and oh in 1995 uh in 95 we went seven and zero, and then we went seven and one and then we won eight and one and then we went eight and two uh to finish the year but starting eight no would be a great thing because you know in my career here we haven't had a chance to start that way so this will be a big game for us it'll give us a chance to maybe do something again for the first time and uh it, it would certainly be nice to end the season uh in the way that we want it to uh, it'd be a great way to go out, but no matter how this season ends, this has been a very, very magical year and a fun year with these kids and, and families. Well, uh, we, we've enjoyed the ride, and we're going to continue to enjoy the ride. You'll see us this weekend at both home uh, against Beloit and JV uh, up in St. Norbert's, and then, uh, of course, we'll be on the road, as you said, to Monmouth, so we're hoping to bring a lot of people. It's a pretty good jaunt down there for you guys, mm -hmm. and uh, – uh, and then, of course, Lawrence is our last game. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's going to be kind of a bittersweet thing as well, right? Um, at least the last game of the season. We're hoping it's not the last game. Right. But right. Uh, the last game of the season, um, uh, for many reasons, you've got seniors and super seniors that are going. Uh, it's going to be your last uh, home uh, regular season game. And, uh, um, but we're looking forward to it all. And, and I just want to take the time to, you know, thank you for uh, coming on and talking with me and, and just getting stuff out there. We put some stuff out today about it, and we're really going to have uh, the uh, uh, parents. We put it on the parents' uh, Facebook group, and uh, I'll have this up probably next week, make sure everything's okay. I, I, I've been trying to go live, but that's kind of scary, as you can that's see. <laughs> um, I understand uh, that, yeah. Technology can be a challenge. It is. So I want to thank you, man. And I, not just as a coach and, and I appreciate what you're doing, but just as a man, you yeah, talking to some of the players, uh, they, they've really like, Hey, uh, you know, I love all the coaches, but Ernst's my guy because he recruited me or whatever. Um, and you know, as parents coming into the program, you kind of need a little bit. What, what, what do you know? And, and the more you ask, the, the better you feel about it. And I think your players have really, uh, uh, whether it be a freshman coming in or the super seniors or, or all your folks in the past, your players in the past, 
have all said great things about this program and in particular great things about you. And I know it's not just you. I know you have a great staff with you and great players. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, you've you've been the head of this and you've done a really good job. And, and coming on here today, you spent uh, uh, an hour or so with me. I just I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing this weekend and maybe getting a, 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 my face painted and really trying to come out there and be that 12th uh, man as, as a group of, pa of parents that are out there. So, again, I appreciate your time, Coach, and uh, good luck uh, this weekend. And uh, uh, go get them at practice tonight. Thanks, Jeff. I sure appreciate it. I appreciate your time too, and and putting all this together. It's this has been a lot of fun, uh, especially getting that knucklehead Jared on here. That, that's that was that was kind of a neat thing. That really was. Uh, well, it was, and I and I was glad to get him on. I didn't hear from some of the other guys, but again, yeah. they could be in school. They right. could be if they're open. They're, they're napping before practice. Who knows? Uh, that, that's a real possibility. Yeah, that's, that's a, a possibility. real possibility. I know they work hard. So yeah. again, thank you so much, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for listening to the County Pulse Podcast. Make sure to find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The County Pulse. And drop a follow on each so you'll be able to take the pulse of Kankakee County and beyond. And beyond.